is it, and I got a super size. <laughs> She's so proud of herself. Of course. We have to. I bet you exercise though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Proportionality and activity. Remember the, that slide? I folded it. Yes. There must be a, a test question somewhere, right? Proportionality and activity. Okay. Yes, I have to admit, I'm at this BMI of 30. I am obese. I have to do something about my obesity. I've inspired myself just giving this lecture today. I will tell my husband we'll go get a few games of tennis tonight. Don't go. keep me late. <laughs> She's telling us this. this is now it's smart. Underweight, underweight, and undernutrition can be just as bad, guys. Yes. That will kill you too. That will kill you too. I.e., I done told you about the Karen Carpenter issue. There are many that, and that's considered a mental disorder. Eating disorder. It falls in. What happens to those individuals? What happens to those individuals? They have severe de degradation of their body. They start losing their hair. Their electrolytes. That's what kills them. That's what kills them. This is, here is a bottle. That's a model in France or wherever it is they do those. She a model? She is. She a model, right? She died. I watched the YouTube that they had of her in being interviewed, and then I watched, and then I said, oh, this is a good one. And then I clicked on this other one, and it talked about where she had died, like, I guess six months later. I, I think this is the one where it shows she's already died. A French model who campaigned against anorexia has died at the age of 28. Isabel Caro posed new for an awareness campaign while suffering from the disease. It's thought she died last month, but her family asked for her death to be kept private. Jane Francis Kelly reports. It was this controversial Italian poster campaign that brought Isabel Caro to world attention. Under the headline, No Anorexia, her emaciated body was intended to show the damage caused by the eating disorder. She is believed to have weighed under 32 kilograms or below five stone at the time. The campaign came amid a debate on the use of ultra skinny models on the catwalk. She is reported to have died in November after returning to France from a job in Tokyo. Her family asked for her death to be kept private and had not wanted to release news of it until now. The cause is not known, but a friend said she had been treated for an acute respiratory illness in hospital shortly Immune beforehand. System. She became defined by her illness Say. and wrote an internet blog and book about her struggles with the condition. The electrolytes are out Jane Francis Kelly, BBC News. You see, but that's what we find a lot with her. <laughs> 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 to be anorexics. What happens is they start getting older and frail. They have they lose taste sensation. When y'all take health assessment next quarter, and all of you guys are gonna make it to take health assessment, aren't we? Woo! We're help one another. Because those those um, what are those things called? Roots? Are they roots? Report of unsatisfactory uh, pro progression? Unfortunately, those will be coming out here in the next week. What are they? Uh, they're called reports of unsatisfactory <laughs> progress. Re uh, uh -oh. You see, what, you know what I'm saying? If, if we have, we, we're required to submit these for those that are under 75, because that's cut off. We're going to be having to do that. We don't want to do any. It's just a heads up. We're telling you, heads up. Get this thing in gear. Time's short. You see what I'm saying? But none of y'all, y'all are going to all help one another because I believe all for one, one for all. Right? But the reality of it is maybe some might not. 
they don't take it. You know, I, you know, one leads a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Well, I try, but you know. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say about the elderly, they don't necessarily choose to have malnutrition. They have social economic issues, right? They have these issues. They have illness. They are weak and frail, and they are just, you know, they're all they can do maybe is just to be able to breathe. See? They have such bad lung disease. They're so weak. They're so disabled. They are one that's on the waiting list for the Meals on Wheels. See? We could do something about this as a, as a, that could be your cohort initiative is to figure out how we could help the city of San Antonio with their Meals on Wheels project. Maybe, maybe that could be something that y'all want to carry as a cohort initiative. I don't know. I just think nutrition is key for the seniors. And we have a lot of seniors that go hungry, I think. Yes, Dallas. <laughs> well, that is um, absence of menopause where it stops. Like, see, she should be, uh, I don't know how old she is. She's probably 23 or 25. I don't she got it. Okay, so she wasn't even 30, but she had the body of an 80 year old or 90 year old. You see what I'm saying? What she had done to herself, she'd stopped having her menses cycle. See, long the time, probably in her, probably right after she started it, she stopped, you know, or she, if she ever had it, you see. Because you find image, image, image in the teenagers. It's not cool to be overweight as a female, as an adolescent, <coughs> you see. We set our young adolescent females up for failure when they see these magazines. Didn't they have a lot of that with gymnasts too for a long time? Gymnasts, yes, yes, yes. that happened in ballet. Sure does. Any of these, because ballet, what, they need to be light so that they can be able to sustain to be on their toes like they do that stuff, you know. Yeah. But you got to be muscular for tennis, right? Just got, don't have to go. Get rid of this gut. <laughs> so how do we stimulate a patient's appetite, guys? These are things that we can do, and you might have a parent or a grandparent. I take it down that path because you guys haven't gotten into the hospital yet. So I want you to think of one of your relatives that are having trouble with eating. What could you do? What can you as the granddaughter or grandson of your, uh, your grandmother, great grandparent, what can you do? Provide food that they can eat. Like my grandmother doesn't have a lot of teeth, so if I cook, so you like got to figure out. Or, you got to yeah. figure out how to fix the food. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And Linda, you were saying. Listen up, guys. Told them to. Uh, I tried everything. I tried uh, all kinds of healthy baby food. You know, and then I told them to use the the Jack Lane. I had a situation once in the ICU and this pulmonologist he was tough as nails on me and he was mad because I wasn't getting the patient to eat or I couldn't get the patient to eat and I got so flustered I said man I'm just going to bring my blender in from home and I, I, I ordered down from the cafeteria because he didn't care what it was if she would just eat. So I had them bring me up fresh fruits, whatever the fresh fruits were. And I would fix blended uh, milkshake. I would use, I would use uh, fruit and a mixture of uh, 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 Insure. Yes, yes, and and some ice cream. I'd always throw in some vanilla ice cream just for fun. Yeah, yeah. And and I and I got her to start eating. You sometimes have to get, be creative. With my mom, she wouldn't eat. She wouldn't eat. Uh, she'd eat very little. She ate very little, even though I, whatever she wanted, I, you know, I'd get that. 
but what I learned, this is, this is something uh, for you guys that have grandparents and you spend time with them. I'd take her to Central Market. Like, I think I told y'all that. And she'd stop it there because they have all these little tables set up. Mm -hmm. It's like if you go through there at the right time, it's like you had a full meal. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Because they want you to, they're sampling this and that, or Costco, they sample you to death on these certain times. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I would do with her. I deliberately figured, took her at the right time, you know, we do her shopping. And it would take me about two, about two hours to do the shopping for her. Because what I was doing is I was, she was, she, for, uh, she liked the idea of stopping at those little tables. And I knew just that little bird bite. But if you multiply it by 30, you know, you got, you, she, she, I knew she, and, and of course it was home cooked because they were cooking it right there. See? So see, that's what I would do with my mom. And whatever she wanted, I didn't care because I knew she needed, she needed, she didn't need uh, food that she, you know, would, you would put in the refrigerator and it's just not gonna be used. Yes? With my dad's head injury, but the one thing that I noticed is a lot of times he'll take a couple of bites and you know, you go no. And it, I, with my children, you know, with kids, they'll tell them you no, know, and usually yeah. you change the subject. So with my dad, I'll be like, so, what were you seeing on TV? And yes. I lift it up and he'd And that's what you guys will do in the nursing home when you're feeding the residents. Mm -hmm. That's exactly, because what? Eating is a social event. Y'all know that, right? Mm -hmm. we, I don't know how people in San Antonio can afford it, but everybody goes out to eat, don't they? <laughs> All them restaurant uh, uh, parking lots are just totally full, aren't they? Now, you know that. As I, you know, man, I don't know these people living on the credit card or something. I don't know. We're living off our credit cards. How we support our families? Huh? Yes. Well, that is. We're helping. We're keeping. We're driving the economy. Us middle class and lower class. That's what what we're really doing. We're the ones running this economy. Hey, there's not a magic bullet. I'm sorry, President. He can't run no economy. It's us. We're out there. The Sonic going to the Sonic. The Whataburger. You know, we, really, isn't that true? That's what we're doing. We're we're driving the economy. That's what we have to. Yeah. I love those. Huh? Yeah, it's bad. Bad. Won't do it. Won't do it. Guys, these are very important. What I've bulleted in uh, in terms of stimulating patients' appetite. Order a late train. Here's a concept. This is a novel idea. I want y'all to think about it. As you BSNs, y'all gonna be leaders in the healthcare. When you feel sick, when you feel sick, <clears throat> do you sometimes enjoy eating breakfast food at dinner time? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I'm just trying to say maybe an oatmeal or a cream of wheat. When you feel really, really lousy. But do you know it's the hardest concept to get through to a dietary kitchen of a hospital? Well, we don't serve breakfast at dinner. See, that's, that's a small change that we can make. And if the patient will eat, why not? Why can't we have breakfast at dinner? Some people eat breakfast at dinner, that's what they do. These seniors, they might do that. They don't eat this big mountainous bunch of food. They bring the tray and it just turns them off. One egg, a piece of toast for dinner. What a novel idea, right? Have you done that? I've done it. You know. Why not? But see, it's hard to, it's hard to break these trains of thoughts. Yes. Something that helped me at the nursing home was my patient didn't like the sausage, which I don't blame her. But, there you go. And she wouldn't open her mouth. Yes. To, and whenever the sausage was there, so I'd make sure I put like the eggs in front of it and kind of like covered it up with her eggs and then like sneak mm -hmm. the sausage in. Like yes. Sausage. Well, it could have a di different taste when you mix it. Yeah. It's like a taco. So like a taco, maybe that's what they're used to is, is an egg bacon taco. A novel idea, but that's what they are used to eating. Uh, 
they're not used to having an egg and a sausage. But when you mix it, and, and the concept of getting a little flour tortilla. Ask them what they want. What ask them what they want. What, what do you like to eat? That's part of your job as a nurse to try to enhance nutrition. Because if you enhance nutrition, you build up the immune system, you help bones recover, you help wounds heal faster. That's part of our job as an RN. A, a simple, I keep things very simple. If you ever, you, you have to realize, I think simpler is the better. Because that's what's going to get you. That's what's going to be the demise of the patient. If you can't get them to eat, how are they going to recover? The most simplest thing. If you can't do good hygiene to make them feel better. See, that's why, my, that's why I'm so heavy on doing. That chart thing can come later. We can worry about the chart later, but if we don't, we don't have the health of our patient, What's what? What's the purpose of our? You see, that's my. I, I live for the patients. We'll figure out the chart. We'll figure out how to document. We'll get that down, guys. Because every place you go, you gotta learn new paperwork. Mm -hmm. This is your time to know how to take care of a patient. Uh, yeah, sorry for the care plan. I can just rip that to shreds, right? I just like to give recommendations. You know, thoughts. I'm not the guru of care plans, guys. I just give you some feedback and recommendations. Now I don't know about some of the others. They might, they might tear them apart. You know, enteral tube feedings. Did anybody see this? I don't know if we had we had some that had some G tubes in place, but I don't know if they were actually getting maybe they're getting bolus feedings. You know, intermittent. In the hospital, you'll see this. You might see it at, at Oak Wells, where they're on continuous feedings. Enteral feedings. Notice that tube is going into the nose and it goes down to the gut. That is not a central line, guys. No. Everybody say no. No. There is a difference between an enteral nutrition and total parenteral nutrition. Total parenteral nutrition is through a central line. A central line. Hyperalimentation is through a central line. It's a venous. It, it goes in, they, the doctor inserts a, a line into the blood system. And that's an IV. It might have a milky appearance because it has lipid, but it's venous and that is enteral and enteral could be a white substance or creamy colored substance and it's a it's going into the feeding tube into the gut don't mix up the two that's instant death oh yes why do I tell you something like this yes but somebody said <laughs> because it's happened it has happened and it's instant death because they weren't paying attention to what they were supposed to be doing. They didn't trace their lines or worse than that, it was someone that didn't understand and that's scary if that's the case. Uh, there's different types of enteral tubes. Salem sump. A Salem sump, that's this right here. You see at the top right hand corner. Mm -hmm. Nurse inserts it blindly. You might have this nasal enteric. They call it nasal enteric tube. Dobhoff is another brand name. It's a feeding tube. These have gotten, these are in, when they first came out with them, they, uh, they mostly, they, it, it depends on the hospital, but they would just let the nurses insert them. They have a wire guide, and what would happen, they were getting, uh, situations where they perforated the esophagus because improper insertion technique. Or worse than that, they inserted it into the lung and perforated and, and, and they bled out. Killed the patient and lawsuits because improper insertion technique. They've actually, a lot of hospitals make the radiologist